This video will show you how to create a concave die from scratch using our software Type Edit. We're going to begin by importing a file. The format of the file we will use is an EPF. Type Edit has various file formats that can be imported. Formats such as a vector, a picture, and surface are all possible. For this video, we're going to use an EPS file and begin our process. Combine and merge before validating. As the file is not centralized, we're going to align the text on the plate to the center, take a closer look and check that it's correct. To create a die, we should mirror this text, select the function mirror, and step one of our process is now complete. We're now going to check if we have any problems with this text by using auto connect before continuing. Everything seems fine. To reduce the milling time, we're going to create two offsets to limit the tool path that will be sent to the machine. To do this, we have a function called multi offset. Here you can choose the number of offsets you want, as well as the distance between the offsets. Once you have selected that, validate, and this is the result you get. Delete the contours you don't need, so you are eventually left with two offsets. Now that we have two offsets, we're going to finish creating the concave surface for the die. Change the view so you can get a better look at what we're doing. We have the support, the profile, and the section, which have been drawn up. Once again, go to surface creation and run swept surface. Look at the surface from different views. Begin with the YX view and the ZX view. Now that the surface is created, we can move on to the CAM module, where we're going to begin to create our tool path. To create the first layer, you need to select the contours you want, which are the external, and the logo to create the die. We're then going to start with engraving. For the first roughing tool, we're going to mill at a depth of 1.5 millimeters at only one step and put in an allowance of 0.1 millimeters. Make them all lateral slices. You can, of course, change the speed and the power and validate. And this is the result we have. Now select the first offset that was created and choose the engraving function again. However, this time we're going to change the tool to a 20 degree conical tool with a tip of 0.1. Change the engraving to 3D with no allowance. We're now going to create the next 3D engraving path with the same tool as you can see here. But this time, switching to a smaller intolerance, a smaller allowance of 0.0.25. Put in 45 for the step power and select the number of lateral slices and validate. With this view, you can now see two things. That this is a 2D and a half engraving and that we have four lateral slices. 
to take a closer look. The four slices relate to our previous engraving tool, which was larger. You can see this in the middle part of the view, which has been removed. Finally, select the contours again for the finishing tool pass. Change the tool to one with a conical tip of 0.05. Choose 3D engraving, but this time with no allowance needed, and limit slices to two. So, so far we have created the toolpath in 2D. To create the mapping, we're going to change the view. We are now going to Select the marker, the surface, and the toolpath we plan on mapping. There are different parameters that are available for the toolpath and the marker. As you can see, you can change the accuracy. We can simulate the result by using NC simulation. Here you will be able to see the results of the concave die. Take a closer look. And of course you can see it from different angles. If you want to output the J code, you can select the different post processors, as you can see here. Select which one you want, then select the toolpath you want to send to the machine, and run. After simulation, you will notice that all the lines of the code have an X, Y, and Z value. This is because it is in 3D mode. And that is how you create a concave die using type edits.